It is Sunday. Welcome to what I'm calling for now FMV Sunday. Inevitably, it's like oil. You know, I'm, I'm using way more FMV on a weekly basis than they're making. <laughs> we're, at, we're at peak FMV. And they ain't making too many more. There's, we're still discovering. We're fracking for FMV games. We do need clean, renewable FMV. You know what we need to do is turn Dragon Slayer Doppelganger into an FMV game. That's that's the next step. So if you would like to kickstart a $500,000 production, there you go. But today we're going to be playing uh, Dark Knights with Poe and Monroe. It's the new, and I do mean new, from 2020, FMV game that takes place within the shape-shifting detective universe. I, in my tweet, I said the contradiction universe. But it doesn't take place in... I think contradiction and shape-shifting detective take place in two different universes, for the best of my knowledge. I think. So Poe and Monroe, they were like... The... Uh, shape-shifting detective, they remember everything was happening in this town... The, the town had a radio program called Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe, who were kind of like r slash no sleep kind of radio hosts. And then this is a full game spun out from, uh, from them. So let, let's get it booted up here. It may be a little bit loud. Or it may not be. No, it, it, it may be. It may be. But we need Dark FM. With Poe and Monroe. We do need FMV to be kind of loud. <laughs> I believe this is episodic. Like the first, this is just merely the first episode of what is an episodic uh, video game. I know you've got an overlay. That's because I'm I'm getting my lunch ready here. Okay. Settings. Subtitles enabled. Yes. I think that's all we need. Limit to 25 FPS. That's okay. I think that we... Hopefully the computer can handle it. And I think... They might have changed their workflow. So that we can actually... Play the game without using display capture, which matters to almost nobody but me. But it does matter. Hey, how about that? How about that? There you go. What's going on here? Is it... Hey, I'm choking over here. He's choking over here. Somebody stop him. Somebody help. Dan's heart when he's uh, in a gunfight in Warzone. Let's start it up. I hope there's... Well, I was gonna say I hope there's no dicks in the game. But like, here's all I'm gonna say. If there's boobs, I hope there's dicks. We support equal opportunity nudity here. 
Yo, this is the <laughs> first. Plague of Bagels, thank you. This is uh, the Dexter opening. Stop. Yeah, Justin McElroy does does do some voice work in this. But it is uh it's not the Canadian Justin McElroy. Don't get excited. It's the American one. I know you were like hoping Dark for hoping for some Vancouver municipal politics voiceover. Nah, it's probably just gonna be like funny, wholesome stuff. You're listening to Radio August, Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Uh, uh, cat. <laughs> oh, it's Dan's soundboard. Not at all. I'm merely demonstrating that this shows the cat's Bruh. meow. And on that note, what's next, Monroe? It's on the schedule, silly. I know that. I'm just making Yo, Poe looks a lot like choice. Mouth's brother. Okay then. What shall I choose? Uh Let me see. The story of the haunted backpack. I choose an early night. You'll be fine without me, won't you? Y you're leaving me, Monroe? Good night, Poe. Good night, August. Sweet dreams. Uh did I lose? Monroe? I'm just kidding, Poe. As if I would ever leave our listens at your mercy. The lady almost vanished, August. Perhaps I'll have to keep her on a shorter leash. Oh. <laughs> sit, girl, sit. All right. Good T minus girl. 45 seconds to horniness. I like it. And now it's time for dreams and nightmares. Dreams. It's like <laughs> walking in on two people this flirting excellent choice. over ICQ. I didn't have one really, did I? You always have a choice, Munro. Uh, that doesn't mean you can change things. Why not? Just unbutton that shirt Maybe a little bit. Maybe you should try interpreting the next call of this dream, Poe. I fear I would lack your warmth and insight. You have the ability to turn even the most ghoulish visions into something hopeful. Not always. Do you suffer from nightmares, Munro? Doesn't everyone? Tell me about yours. Well... There is this one I've been having lately. Teaching English in South Korea? I can't see. I'm stumbling around trying to feel my way in the pitch black. But I keep bumping into people. Yo, this is me at the grocery it's store because like, my glasses keep fogging up because of my mask. This crowd, but they don't know that I'm there. Perhaps you're feeling isolated. Hmm. Maybe. But... I'm not interested in them. They're just in my way. It's like I'm searching for something. The number nine. Are you kidding me? But what does nine represent, Poe? Who do you think you are? I am. Well, according to Dante, there are nine levels Dante. of hell. Well, I feel so much better now. I did warn you. Perhaps you should help our next call. Who is listening to this? Frankie, your life is it improv? Monroe. Is it Hi, is Frankie. it horror? Is voice, it yeah. psychology? Oh, what is this? Thank you. I think all voices are beautiful. What do you think? No, it's thank you. You shouldn't have. It. Okay. So, what's your dream, listener? I'm in August, and wherever I go, all I can hear is the radio. It's everywhere. It's loud and relentless. But there's this bird. She cuts through the noise and guides me. I listen to the bird, and I fall blissfully asleep. Sounds ASMR. Interesting. People dream about their surroundings a lot. And a dream within a dream? That's nothing to worry about either. Hello, what do Ruka. you think, Poe? I think you have a hardcore fan, Munro. What did the bird look like, Frankie? Beautiful. Angelic. But it's trapped in a cage. Uh-oh. A prison. But there's only one warden, and the warden is weak. You could say there's that again. Another bird with a rumbling voice that makes me angry. It plumes its feathers, but my bird? 
the one that calls me? She's not interested in him. And she's caged. Hello, this is the... the uh, we'd like to speak to the police, Frank. please. He's talking about us and trying to be funny. But it's a dream. I never said it was a dream. Oh, oh, oh. well, I think um, we've had quite enough of this. Listen to the warden jangling his keys. Don't you see oh he's my God. in prison? Roka, relax, buddy. Well, um, Frankie, we don't use our first names on air, so... Uh-oh. Uh, cut, cut him, cut him. I've cut the call. Is that a good idea? Well, what was I supposed to do? Help him. He needed help. Don't encourage him, Alice. These kinds of things must be nipped in the bud. Just shadow ban him. Are we still live? Sorry, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> this was a very strange call. I hope you'll agree. Frankie, if you're still listening, I do apologize for Poe. He can get very protective. I kind of get your analogy now. Do I, Munro? Very well, then. Standing down. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, listeners, we've upset him now. <laughs> Poe's got all frowny face. And they say chivalry's dead. Um, yeah, yeah, you gotta pick up the note. I apologize, I'm very bright. Ruka has opened my blinds. What's that? This. Oh, it's nothing. What is it? It's nothing. Give it to me. How long is the break for? Give it to me. All in good time, so how long? Three minutes. Okay. Oh, no, it's Twitch ad breaks. For us. You stay here. You're making tea for me. I do it all the time. What's going on? Give me the note. Or I'm leaving. Of You're the block in the door. Drama, mustn't we, Alice? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> what the hell, Poe? Why were you hiding this? Well, he doesn't beat around the bush. Psychotic listener, that's all. Frankie? Not necessarily. We have lots of psychotic listeners. How can you joke about this as a death threat? It's clearly a death threat. I knew it would upset you, but I'm an old hand at this, Alice. People see you as a celebrity. It makes them do abnormal things, but they're just normal people. When did you find it? Someone slipped it under the door. Just now? Well, yes, but it's nothing to worry about. We've been getting them for the last few weeks. Weeks? Maybe a month. Oh, Lord. So that could be a killer behind the door. Maybe, but never when I've looked. Uh, oh. probably not. I'm pretty sure this is There's a WeWork box. office. People can just walk in anywhere. It's probably just a podcaster back there. Um, shape of an L on her Did forehead. I don't think it's necessary. Paul, oh. do you ever get the feeling the radio station is, is cursed? No more than the rest of all this. Maybe we should call it a night. And abandon our listeners? Munro, this isn't like you. I just have a really bad feeling about this. Why, because of the note? I think something terrible. Come on, get over it. Happen. Shh, Alice. I can feel your heart racing from here. Everything will be fine. I don't think so. Come on, we're alive. I think I'm gonna go home. Hey everybody, we're back with golf. How could you keep this from me? I thought you cared about me. What if I'd been killed? Um, they're from my wife. What? Gwendolyn? Yes, Gwendolyn. It's her perfume. Does she know? I work late when I don't have any work to do. And I kiss her on the cheek instead of the lips. <laughs> yes, she knows. But does she want to kill me? She doesn't know who we Town's only got like 75 people in it. Oh, oh, is this thing on? 
I love you. I love each and every one of you listeners. I'll never be a frowny face again. Hello, Livestream Fails. Been having any more bad dreams lately, August? Okay, who's our next listener? It's Frankie again. Who's the who's screening these calls? Put him through. Frankie, you're live with Monroe. I didn't finish what I had to say. I'm sorry about that. You can carry on now. Sometimes the radio gets too much. It makes me frustrated. So I go into the belly of the beast, and I hide, and I listen, and I wait. So this is a dream that breaks into other He's dreams. He's not talking about a dream, of lady. No segues for dreams. Poe? The belly of the beast. Have you been leaving messages, Frankie? Yes, John. Yes, I have. Have you been getting them? What did the messages say? His wife is Frankie? I'm going to kill you. Um, freaking cut the, cut the call. Sorry, Frankie, we seem to have lost you there. But if you're still listening, I think your dream expresses what a kind and gentle person you are deep down. And the fact that you want to protect the bird tells me that you would never hurt anyone in any way. And I think that's really special, Frankie. So. In fact, it's so special. Please pick up your telephone and press the magic code Don't. 911. Not hiding, Monroe. I'll Wait for it. the knights with the flashing Frankie, lights. You don't know that. To take you, you away to Special wife. Town. I thought you said she didn't know. Hide. Um, um... No. Okay. If you're not hiding, then neither am I. Frankie? It's Alice. I'm open. Or Gwendolyn? Uh, maybe it's Gwendolyn? Okay. Just you and me. Well, and, and then also... The guy, I mean, he's got a window in the door. There's no one here. I've had enough of this. What are you doing? I'm getting our caller back on the line. Maybe we should just carry <laughs> on with the show. It is the British way. Come on, Frankie, pick up. You know you want to. What a ringtone. Beep. Sure, go with the fire extinguisher. Why, right, let's see where this goes. Oh no, it's a Note 3! If it rings too much, this whole place could go up. Hey! Get bashed. That was just the custodian. He's here to... I went over to clean up the phone. I thought it would interrupt your radio show. No, boss. Team wipe. Eliminated. Collateral. Tuff, 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 tuff. Got one. We still alive? When I was twelve, my father died. 
Similar situation. He was riding his bike to work and somebody hit him in the bus. face with a fire extinguisher. A school bus. My school bus. <laughs> oh my god. This is an Alanis Morissette song. <laughs> I was at the back of the bus and I could see everything. And I was driving. Didn't move. Didn't get up. Lazy. Died instantly. Since then, I haven't seen him. Image He's a deadbeat. Somehow stayed with me. You think? <laughs> it doesn't anymore. I couldn't tell you what it looked like. Mother told me a secret. There's a way that you can make your memories disappear. Can you make today disappear? No. Sorry. It doesn't work today. Pick one of these. Um. Honestly, I like that apple. You don't have to peel it. Now hold it tightly in your hands and close your eyes. Yo, what if she just ripped it in half? We already know she's no. a strength user. Think thanks to the fire extinguisher. From this evening. And imagine the object you're holding is there. Picture it. So you can oh. see it. Okay. You have to make yourself believe that the object is there. Okay, it's there. Now open your eyes. That's all there is to it. Throw it away. When you throw it away, it will take that memory with it. Ah, uh, man of science. It definitely will. It, there's no doubt in my mind. Finally, tonight, police are appealing for anyone who might know the whereabouts of 35-year-old veterinarian Francisco Bilson. Mr. Bilson hasn't been seen since the headless body of his business partner, Jennifer Gordon, was found in an industrial bin outside Lux Fitness. Is that the first murder in August, Poe? This year, yes. But technically, it's on the Stepford border. So whilst August police deal with it, the crime statistic is with Stepford. Yo, it's the Disney World oh, strat. That's cold. Yes, indeed. Tonight's weather will be cloudy with scattered showers. Yeah, make sure you cover your head. Now what happens when your very own Poe and Monroe decide to play a game of truth or dare? Stay tuned to find out more later. But first, we want to hear from you, August. Uh-oh. Got a guilty secret? Need to get something off your chest? Not you, Frankie! Father Poe is waiting in the confession booth to absolve you of all your sins. Anonymously, of course. And here's a message from our sponsor. Do we have a sponsor? It's Warby Parker. Away, po. He just disappeared. He, he was dead, Ellis. No pulse, no breath. Then who took him? It would seem it was our guardian angel. You guys, you're talking over the Zip Recruiter ad. I never want to hear that voice again. He won't be coming back. How can you be so sure? And why did you take off before the police? Sherry's got there? berries. You left me to do with everything. Paid through the Not nose everything. for this spot. Not everything. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. It's over. Our funding's running out, isn't it? Months ago. How do we pay it back? A radiothon. In bed with Poe and Monroe. Lurkers. If you're out there just lurking, then give us a sign. It's Millicent. Once upon a midnight dreary, oh my God. was pondered weak and weary. The station shuts down. I don't know what I'll do. You're safe, man. Dark nights. With Pearl and Monroe. Okay. Um... That was like 20 minutes long. I, w I felt like we were just, Things were moving fast, but I really felt like I was just getting settled. 
Um, perhaps there's the next episode may already be be in this. I hope. I just I'm looking. Here's a can I can I give you a piece of constructive criticism? Um, I never know what choices I'm making. The only choice where I knew what I was doing was uh, the apple versus the orange. Every other time I clicked, I was like, I don't know what is what's gonna what I'm doing here. <laughs> you trod on the note. All right. Well, let's let's see. Oh, dude, I think we're good to go. All right. We're st we're still going. Ruka, don't freak out. Kate's playing the piano right now, and he's he's going insane. He's like, this this noise is outrageous. Is it over? It's merely just begun, Monroe. Spooked by the murder, huh? Listen, you can't run a public access radio show and get gun shy at a few death threats, Monroe. Hello, Ruka. Don't be so anxious, buddy. Our funding's running out, isn't it? Months ago. Oh, how are we still Damn here? Damn Brexit. My rainy day savings. You can't use that. That's for you and your family. <laughs> no, you're right. Think of it as a, as a loan. Okay, well, how do we pay it back? We send a seed of hope out to Lady August, and she blossoms it into fruitful returns. Or we could have a fundraiser. Yes, a radiothon. I'm thinking a 24-hour sponsored broadcast. Bounty alert? We could call it In Bed with Poe and Monroe. Our nine listeners are going to lose their you minds. Think people will pay us to sleep together in bed for 24 hours? No, silly. You're not allowed to sleep. I mean, I, if you're losing money on your podcast, you're doing it wrong. It's proof that we stayed here for 24 hours. That's the point of the podcast. It has no overhead. Oh, oh, oh! None of the covers are on top, Monroe. Oh, you're such a gentleman, Poe. But... I like being on top. I'm sure you do. Because I'm the boss. Yes, and because it's been 12 hours and you haven't got under the sheets yet. Oh, you're so observant, Poe. You're like Sherlock Holmes. Here we go. Welcome back, listeners. That was The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. No copyright infringement intended. And it's time to take your call. Hmm. I can't see any callers. Is it working for Oh people? no. It's when, when chat doesn't it move for for 25 it's seconds. Zero viewers, so, you're like So what's what's everybody's uh what's your favorite oh, pizza topping? Anybody out there like pizza? Can I seven spam in chat for the lurkers, please? <laughs> What do you mean, lurkers? Uh, people that lurk, but never join in. They're probably out there right now. You mean listeners, right? Lurkers, <laughs> if you're out there, just lurk. Put a seven in chat. Give us a sign. Uh. <gasps> it touched me! What touched <laughs> you, Alice? Something in the bed. It was probably just my foot. You're not under the covers, Poe. Hmm, strange. Nothing there. No scorpions. There was.
His face is just like, how how long do I have well, to do this? Thank you, Lurkers. Until I uh, until I've Indeed. done the absolute bare minimum hmm, I'm getting of a comfort. Very strong sense of deja vu. What about you, Monroe? If you mean, have I ever been in bed with someone expecting greatness and then been sorely disappointed? Then, yeah, I'm getting deja vu. It's that positive attitude that brings all the donors to the yard. Speaking of. Dear residents of August, please keep donating. Whatever you can afford, let us keep making radio for you. There. I don't think you've We've recorded a single bit of what radio. Bathroom. Of course. It's just the no callers, dead silence, your own personal drama, and then an ask for money. Freshen up. Go back in. Be a queen. <laughs> Be a tired hallucinating queen. It's 24 hours! Uh, let's go lipstick. Okay, I think you're actually fine on the lipstick. Because... <laughs> Maybe should have gone with the other one. This is an angle where they surprise you with like a ghost or something right after this. Monroe, you fam I'm feeling pretty sleepy, actually. Your lips, so luscious. They're making me think things I should. Oh, no. <laughs> well, lucky that's there, then. Ah, yes. The camera. Tiny piece of hey, was, uh, yeah. with an imaging sense. I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of the angle on this one. <laughs> Are you okay? Could you get under the sheets, please? Oh no. Comfortable? What are you gonna do? Kiss me or host a radio show? Look at you. You're perfect in every way. And I can never have you. Oh, let's not get into this now. You're like a beautiful butterfly. And the only way I get to keep you is to pin you into my collection. What? Easy girl. Easy now. Easy girl. That's an example of what could happen to our radio show if you don't donate right now. We've got 15 minutes. What shall we do? Did you fall asleep? It's only been 12 hours. 12 hours? Yes. You look like you've seen a ghost. I had a nightmare. Dreams and nightmares with Poe and Monroe. No. It was real. Unlike our show, which is completely staged. Sleep deprivation, it can play tricks with the mind. Yeah. I guess. We're just watching so, one dude on his phone? 15 minutes. Was this a just chatting stream? I need the bathroom. Again. Again? Once upon a midnight dreary. Well, that was the raven the again of a many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tap. A 24 hour you? raven you? stream. You know who I am. It's Millicent. Oh no. Um, sure. <laughs> Millie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Millie. Millie. Uh, 
Millie, what are you doing here? The script told me to come in, silly. Edgar. Edgar? I'm not Edgar. Fine, Poe, have it your way. But what did you bring her for? The girl? Alice, she's... You need to leave. Leave? I can't leave. I died here, remember? Waiting for you. Sorry, my love. A woman dying, waiting for her husband? For this, moment, <laughs> for this day. What is it? Opposite day? <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm trying to work overtime. Bad dreams. Just bad dreams. <sighs> that joke's gonna do great on the talk. Nope. 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 Uh, yeah, sink. It's a door. A door? A door. Ah, it was in the bleak December when each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. A door. Did you miss me? You're Lenore, aren't you? From the poem. Yes. You changed my name. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. Why are you here? Because you're dying, Poe. I'm here to comfort you. None of this, none of this is real, is it? You need to sleep. Yeah, sleep deprivation. I think that's probably... The opposite of what I need to do. Rest. Can't you hear them calling you? I need to see Ellis. Murderer. <sighs> Yo, how'd they do that shot? Christopher Nolan? Did Christopher Nolan work on this? She just walked out of a bathroom into a field, dude. Ho? Ho? Yep. That's me. Oh, uh, it's so hard to click on, dude. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not, dude, it can't be done. Who needs the aim trainer? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, oh. I just Thank got God. back from Anthrocon. Where are we? What's happening? Is it a dream? What are you doing with that? There. We've got 15 minutes. What shall we do? <gasps> I can't believe you did that. What? Oh, then now this is classic, having to apologize for something you did in a dream. Come with me. Where? We've got 15 minutes. Come with me. All right. Where are we going, missus? <laughs> Pope? Are you really Pope? Cause, governor. What's the jig? Oh my god. Oh. You're telling me even British people do British accents for this fun? This can't be happening. Po? Monroe? Who is she? That's your question. <laughs> yes, that's a bit strange, Alice. Perhaps should have led with, um, why are we tied up? Well, I thought maybe you could ask that. A lover's kiss, Edgar. This new one not up to snuff. What's she talking about? She thinks I'm the real Edgar Allan Poe. Well, you are named after him. I'm not Poe. I'm Poe. What's the plan, Poe? 
get out? Uh. Wow. All right. It's just that easy. Oh. That was easy. What shall we do about him? Leave him. Okay. He's a killer. <laughs> See ya. It's okay. Do you hear that sound? What sound? What is it? An evil thing. Coming for you. I love you, Ellis. Not dead. Only sleeping. Stay with me, Ellis. I can. I'm waking. <laughs> No, oh, it's the carbon monoxide alarm. Yo, that's the scariest stories ever told. This has got more twists and turns than a roller coaster. to turn mine off the beeping was giving me a headache hey, wake him up come on we need to go quickly put fire I don't know We did it? And then it was all faked so they could get more donations for their radio show. Tell them what happened, Poe. It's ghastly, really. Do they need to know? Yes, they do. <sighs> all right, then. Good boy. Monroe and I almost passed away last week from carbon I monoxide. almost died, but vlog. Yay. That much should be up. Our central heating system became blocked and started backing up carbon monoxide into the building. But lucky I got that detector, eh, Poe? Yes, indeed. But not so lucky for the young raven stuck in the flu. What? I didn't want to tell you because it's not very nice. But since you asked, the blockage was because a young raven had become stuck in the flu. No. What happened? From what the insurers could make out, it got stuck and then its mate came in after it. Both of them died together. That's so sad. What, what kind of insurance companies? Are you an expert in bird well, love? They're together now. Somewhere in distant Aden. But in our realm, there will be never more. Let's change the subject. You brought it up! For the station. Actually, the insurance paid out quite a lot of money. It seems the installers had also been negligent by not including a protective barrier on the flu, so... So the ravens died to save our show? Yes, you could say that. Or a bungled building job almost killed us. So, glass half full, I'd say. Agreed. Perhaps... We shouldn't spend so much time in bed together, Poe. Do you really mean that? Perhaps. And that's that? Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. The, what an ambiguous ending. <laughs> Yesterday in the August update, you said that Joe Watts had gone missing. He'd gone to a friend's house after school and hadn't come back. So what are you saying? We I'm looking for a gift from my aunt. Ourselves. I know your aunt, and this is perfect for her. This is perfect. It's like you've met my aunt. Oh, she's back. What are we supposed to do? I don't think it's between the dots. I just see the final picture. Frankie? They're really bringing back Frankie in episode three?
You avoided the not a door. You confronted the not a door. 47% of people just let Poe die of carbon monoxide poisoning rather than clicking on his chest and taking two seconds to save his life. He was a killer. <laughs> well, next episode, please. He only goes into a coma. Oh, okay. As long as he only goes into a coma, then uh, I can... <laughs> I guess I can justify it. Her name is Aislinn Death, huh? Her, her birth name is Aislinn Death. Sure. Why not? It's Ashlyn? I don't know how it's pronounced. Dark Knights. With Poe and Monroe. Call on line three. Is that a bad thing? I changed the number after Frankie. He's the only one that knows it. Frankie's dead. We imagined all that. So we take <laughs> the call then? <laughs> Who is it? Hello? He will die if you let him. Frankie? The boy... The order you do things is... Bedmas. ...important. I I've seen them all. Is this a prank? Frankie's dead. Who is this? Listen, just listen. She will lie to you. She will get away. She will kill the boy. You can't change that. What are we supposed to do? I don't have the lines between the dots. I just see the... ...final picture. I don't like that, Poe. Me neither. And here's okay. Yvette on line two. I love your show. <laughs> Thanks, Yvette. I love your accent. Racist. What's your question? My question is, do you care about people? Oh! That's a strange question. It's an AMA, Monroe. Ask me anything literally means... I knew he was anything. a Redditor. Yeah, I know. But do we care about people? Yes, of course. Speak for yourself, Monroe. I'm an animal lover myself. So I knew he was a Redditor! No, I do care about people, just I care about animals more. So you care about animals more than people? Present company excluded, of course. So that's a yes? And a oh, sorry, I forgot Yvette Wait, was still here. So if I was crossing the road at the same time as a cute bunny, and you could only swerve and save one of us, you would choose the bunny. I'd save you, obviously. Well, that's reassuring. I said I'd save you. And how long did you have to think about it? I like to consider things. You have a split second. Well, I wasn't timing it. Fine. Save me or a cat. You. You said that quickly to get on my good books, didn't you? Wow, well, you, you know, just I'm can't win with some people. Oh. What? Does that answer your question, Yvette? Yes, I think so. I do have another dilemma. Maybe we can help you, Vet. I'd rather not say on air. Why would right. you call a radio have... show? It's about time for a short break, anyway. Stay on the line, Yvette. <laughs> what we'll is be back this in five show, minutes dude? To answer more of your AMA questions. Until then, here's something slightly more interesting instead. We're off. Yvette? I've got a hostage. Is that like a cheese? A He's a boy from August I. Why is he a hostage, Yvette? I had a crush on him, but he turned out to be unpleasant. So you kidnapped him? No, I drugged his drink. Is he okay, Yvette? You twugged his what? Not really. He has not woken up yet, but now that I've spoken to you, I'm 
probably just going to let him die. I like animals more than people anyway. Like Paul. Yvette, I was joking with Monroe. Thank you for your help. Did you get the number? No, it's withheld. Of course. Maybe Star 67. We should call the police just in case. Tell them what was said. Really? I'm not sure. Mm, I don't know if this is a situation where you go to the police. <laughs> I know it's a sensible thing to do. But what if it isn't? <laughs> Hold if on. Think we'll be wasting police time. If it isn't? The, the police will take action. This is the August police we're talking about here. Oh, no. That's two guys in DuPont drinking coffee and watching YouTube. Oh, so, no. They're not busy, then. So they're useless. The kid will probably be dead by the time DuPont's finished his sandwich. I'm calling the police. Fine. But we still have to do something. What do you suggest? I know this is sensible, but what if it isn't? Yesterday in the August update, you said that Joe Watson gone missing. Ah, uh, yes, I remember. He'd gone to a friend's house after school and hadn't come back. What are the odds that Yvette has got Joe hostage? Almost as high as Yvette not being her actual name. I know the headmistress from the high school. Maybe we should talk to her. Or maybe the parents. They asked for the story to be run. Don't you want to go back to school? You clearly had a better childhood than I did. Mm. I still have my cheerleading out there. It's no time Let's for horniness. Talk Let's talk to the headmistress first. What's her name? Dallas Umber. That's a strange name. She's a strange woman. Take a seat, both of you. Really does not appear to be a strange well, woman. It's admirable that you're returning to complete your education. You're a little old for this institution. Sorry, you're mistaken. I have a degree in cryptozoology. That's not a real degree. It's okay, Paul. I knew she was a She's redditor. Messing with us. Really? Yes. I'm eccentric. Can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here about Joseph. The Watson. script calls for it. And there was I thinking I was going to be on the radio. Joseph is a pupil here, though, right? He certainly is. Head boy and heartbreaker. Heartbreaker? <sighs> He's a good looking lad. Generous nature, always helping people. Any idea where he could have gone? Well, Probably at some young lady's house whose parents are away. He went missing yesterday, and we had a caller on Radio August who said they'd kidnapped him. Kidnapped? No, that doesn't that sound like Joe. Fetched. We're looking for him, so anything you can tell us would be useful. You'd be better off talking to his form tutor, Miss Clay, but plow away. Excuse me? Nice whistle. Thank you. Do you have a specific question? What do you use it for? Blowing. It makes a noise. I know, but for running or sports. Do you know how hard it is to keep teens with raging hormones in What life? are you talking about, lady? Sorry? Well, less hard with a whistle. It's like Pavlov's dog. Blow it, and they know something bad is coming. Do you know any pupils called Yvette? Not recently. Why are you looking for someone called Yvette? It's the name of the kidnap. And by recent you mean... Yo, she's Yvette! ...with an Yvette, but that was many moons ago. Not in August. Different country, actually. Wales. Well, we should be off now. Here's my number, if Joe turns up, or if you think of any place he might be. Thank you, Mrs. Amber. It's Miss Amber. I knew it was coming. Miss Amber. <clears throat> you too. Take care. August, not the town it used to be. Not since last September. She's eccentric, can't you tell? <laughs> Kobe. I don't know, you should throw their number out. They're not the cops. What's our next move, Monroe? Wow. Who did you um, say Joe's teacher was again? Miss Clay. If we can find her address, we should visit her. I think she's staying <laughs> it's at the guest house. All out. Why do you think that? Yeah, of course. I saw a bill on Miss Amber's desk. 
Let's go see her then. Of course, why wouldn't the teacher of the school be staying at a guest house? Is this the right move? I have no idea. Let's go and see Miss Clay. And hope she's at the guest house. I like making the decisions. I'm very happy to be woman-led. I know you are, Poe. I'm gonna talk to Miss Gallagher. You find Miss Clay. Why don't I talk to Miss Gallagher, and you find Miss Clay? I don't trust you talking to other redheads. How do we know Miss Clay isn't a redhead? Do you guys ever have a conversation? Like... It's just a normal conversation? Thank you for seeing me, Miss Clay. Oh, anything to help. Uh, we had an anonymous call at the radio station. A girl called Yvette claims to have kidnapped Joseph Watts. Really? I knew he'd gone missing. I didn't realize he'd been kidnapped. We're not entirely sure yet. Also, we're not the and cops, so Yvette? you don't have to talk to us. Mm, no, that's not anyone at the school I'm aware of. Is there anything you know that might help us find him? Uh, I've only been at the school a couple of months myself. I'm still feeling my way around. Okay. Sometimes it's better if you don't... You appear to have answered my question yeah. with a straight yes. answer instead so of an innuendo. I'm gonna need you to just cut oh, that um, shit out immediately, sure. please. August. Uh, magic. Huh. Magic, that's good. Good. <laughs> School. August High. Joseph Watts. Litterbug. A litterbug? Oh, sorry, um, but that just came out. <laughs> no, that, that's fine, That that's good. Why litterbug? I... I saw him drop a sweet wrapper once. Haven't been able to let it go, apparently. Really made an impression. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Thanks for trying. No, oh, that's totally okay. I really hope you find him. Thanks, Miss Clay. This is a lovely guest house room, I might add. Thanks, I rented it myself. Is there anything else I can help you with, Mr. Pope? Um... Do you live here at the guest house? Not just temporarily. If I'm offered a full-time position, I'll be looking for a place. Isn't it expensive? The school pays. Do any of the kids ever visit here? Excuse me, sir? That would be weird. Why, what have you heard? Not much. Could um, you put on a French fine. accent for me, well, please? No. No kids here. You can ask the landlady if you like. I might do that. Well, I wouldn't have suggested you should if I had anything to hide. Ah. But you might have said that to make me think that. So I didn't ask. And really you did. Again, I'm a and podcaster. I in the first place. You don't really have to feel intimidated. This isn't very welcoming, is it? I'm sorry. Please drop by the radio station sometime. For some more badgering. Nothing's ever as simple as it seems in August. You can start thinking and feeling the craziest thing. Am I making you think crazy things, Mr. Pope? Mr. Pope? His name is Po Po Pope? Well, you've been most useful, Miss Clay. Have a good evening. I do hope you find Joe. Thank you. Well, I didn't get much out of Miss Clay. She said Joe was a litterbug. So she's an eco-warrior? Yes. Um, I wish we could have recycled our meeting, actually. How was Miss Gallagher? Kind of dominant. I liked her. Maybe I shouldn't let you hang around with other redheads. Maybe you shouldn't. Well, let's circle back to this later. Did she say anything useful at all about Joe? She said Joe's parents sold fireworks. Hmm, I suppose that could be useful. Anything else? How? Seems we're out of leads. I'm still up for visiting the headmistress again. We could drill Miss Gallagher some more. Give it up, Alice. I'm trying. The headmistress, then? Miss Gallagher? I mean, okay, you fine. Miss Gallagher. You want to talk to Miss Gallagher again. Okay, bye. <laughs> I see. I suppose I should visit Miss Clay, then. Uh. Oh, okay. We're back. Back again, Miss Monroe. Yes. Yo, they have a I Nest know. thermostat. Set to 18! And I saw your reflection in the window. <laughs> We've hit it dead end with Joe. Oh dear. Want to drive? Sure. Well, you're quite handy, aren't you? 
I feel like I have my uses. It's one of those scenes where they're doing dishes, oh, but come for they're earlier. not doing dishes, if you I know what I mean. Screed in the garage. Screed? Cement flooring. Wish I got the self leveling stuff now. <laughs> Hiding bodies. <laughs> Don't be silly. If I was going to do that, I'd use my industrial grade meat mincer. I probably shouldn't eat here. Oh, no, you should. We've always got plenty of fresh meat in the freezer. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's asking for a Baskin. Bolton? Haven't even heard that name. Oh, don't worry about that. Don't you have a dishwasher anyway? I did. He's under the screed. <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking or not. Oh, I know, I'm very good. Seventeen Hunger Lane. Perhaps Joe was one of the missing she talked about. Let's hope not. Miss Clay doesn't seem to know about anything, unless it's an eco issue. <laughs> she's such a she's, she's such an eco fascist. You're welcome to talk to her too. We don't have time, Paul. Saw a kid drop a sweet wrapper once. Me. All of a sudden, she became Where's radicalized. Excellent. And the address to go with? Hunger Lane. Off Beaconsfield Drive. I know it. Great restaurants. Uh-uh. Before we interrogate in this household, we say grace. People don't normally want to hear what I have to say. We do. We want to hear about Joe Watts. If I tell you what I think, I'll topple my meds. I well, have anemia. don't want to get you in trouble, just tell us what you can. Don't be silly, Paul. We're not gonna tell anyone. You can- It's okay. You can trust us. We're from the radio. It's Miss Clay. She ran this after school club green for life. I knew it! I was in it. She made us make a list of those with the most environmental impact in our class. I did it. It was me. I made the list. Joe was third on it and the third person to go missing. You have to help and you need to. It's okay. We're gonna help. You just need to take a breath. She'll have him in the woods. At Hell Park. You have to hurry. She'll kill him if they do pay. What? A ransom? His parents. He is being ransomed. Uh, one of those classic eco-terrorism hostage situations. And what if they don't pay? They'll pay. They own a fireworks store. I don't know. In the Midlands. What did you see, Westmarie? Miss Clay. She was turning him into trees. A dryad. A what now? A dryad. Someone who's part human, part tree. We need to go. How part? Yeah, was Marie? Uh, you, normally, I put it in reverse, and then you did good. <laughs> just kind of eyeball it. We're gonna save Joe. You wait here, and we'll be back. <laughs> what is that fit, my man? Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Look at that drip. Whoa. Nice drip. There he is. Getting turned into a tree. We're too late, Alice. No. He's already got bark. No. This is all our fault. Yep. 
Really should have called the police. Probably should be calling him right now. He wasn't eaten. He, he was murdered. Yeah, we didn't say he was I eaten. Miss Clay had something to do with it. Yvette, she's the one the police should be finding. Do you have her voice recorded? Yes. <laughs> He's so worried about him being eaten. Do the police have it? I already sent it over. I'm sure they're working on it. I guess I'd better go and identify Joe's body. What, whatever's left of him. Always wolves pretty much eat anything. Just in case you were wondering. One time, there was a whole school bus of children and... Poe, I think you can save that story for another time. Of course. Sorry. We've already established he was in Eden. Us. We will see ourselves out. Frank, he gave us a warning. Did he know? I'm having a hard time with this whole Frankie thing. Where do you think Miss Clay is? No one can find her. Far away from August, I should imagine. I feel responsible. Don't. It's not like you made all the decisions that led to Joe's death. Well... If they ever invent a time machine, I'm coming back and I'm saving Joe. Good luck with that. Maybe he was Ridiculous. I'd buy Apple stock. That's gloomy. Fate and destiny, Monroe. Can't always be changed. We never found out who Yvette was either. Some things will always remain a mystery, Monroe. Oh. She's making her list. Zoom in on the list. Poe and Monroe. Right at the top. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. We have a special treat for you tonight. Madame Baratsky claims to have helped hundreds of clients. <laughs> your iPad mic, self. dude. Monroe? How old are you? I was born ready. She's in the quantum realm. I'm Elizabeth. That's what you were going to ask, isn't it? Dark Knights. With Pearl and Monroe. Oh, man. All right. Nice. Again, 52% said... Don't call the police. Whatever. I'm not here to make moral judgments. Um, it appears you could not keep Joe alive. There is no option that keeps Joe alive. You chose to help Violet dry up. I'm like, I don't even remember who Wes Marie is. <laughs> You can? Well, it's not on the freaking story decision board, dude. You chose to talk about Miss Clay's accommodations. It's not just a single button click? Well, it's, excuse me, I'm used to Telltale, where it is. Okay? John Pope? I told you it was John Pope Poe. Laura Lemon. Lemon, it's Wednesday. It's a really good Dark opening. Nights. With Pearl and Monroe. Maybe we should have a safe word. Oh, here we go. If you're worried. I'm worried I won't like it. Then we should definitely have one. What do you think, Miss Baratsky? 
It's Madame. I'm sorry, Madame Bratsky. <clears throat> you must feel relaxed. So if a safe word would help, then yes. What should it be? Uh. Clown. Thanks, Raspy. Raspy? That's what Paul calls him. It's how he talks. Uh. <laughs> Places, everyone. She's like, I'm not used to being the most normal one in the room. And we're live in three, two, welcome back. Listeners, can you hear me? Hello? Special treat for you tonight. Hello, listener. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Claims to have helped hundreds of clients discover their previous selves, from ancient Egyptian concubines to Cold War spies. Welcome, Madame Bratsky. Thank you for having me. Oh, you you don't need to talk. You're not mic'd up. Without my better and more beautiful half. Say hello, Monroe. Hello, Monroe. Monroe has bravely volunteered to be put to sleep by Madame Bratz. Oh, no! You make it sound like euthanasia. She's going to wake you up again. Aren't you? Of course. Remind me again why you couldn't do it, Poe? Oh, dodgy knee. In just a moment, Madame Bratsky will put Monroe into a trance. I prefer hypnotic state. Into a hypnotic state. And we'll ask her to describe what she sees. Later on, we'll be taking your calls. Have you lived before? Do you remember any past lives? Or is it all just a money? What are you gonna do? Give them your home <laughs> phone number? Let us know. Monroe? Yes, Poe? Are you ready to meet your past self? I was born ready. Let's hope you were reborn ready. Madame Baratsky, take it away. Now, Miss Monroe, please relax. Close your eyes. Train car. And focus on the sound of my voice. Listen to nothing else but my voice. <sighs> Madame Baratsky has started the regression process. You're telling me. <laughs> <clears throat> Focus on your arms. Feel how heavy they are. Rude. Feel them sink into the chair and pull you into the deep, deep dark. Let the darkness consume you. Uh, sure. Sorry, I had an itchy nose suddenly. It won't work if you fidget. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'll be still. <sighs> Let's start again. Listen to my voice and nothing else. <laughs> Focus on your arms. Feel how heavy they are. Man, this is good radio. Feel them sink into the chair. And pull you into the deep, deep dark. Let the darkness consume you. I choose, I choose not to click anything. Okay, never mind. Sorry, I had an itchy nose suddenly. It won't work if you fidget. If I'm you sorry, choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Okay. Listen to my voice and nothing else. Focus on your arms. Feel how heavy they are. Feel them sink into the chair. And pull you into the deep, deep. Dark. It's Detroit. Let the darkness consume you. Oh, she's done. Of course. Good. She is fully relaxed and suggestible. All right. Uh, give me your now social you've security number. Into a life you have lived before. Do you remember who you are? Yes. 
Monroe says she can remember a previous life. Shh. Oh, it's a radio show. He says, Do not rush. We can get hammered here. Let the world come to you. Let it reveal itself to you. Let the world envelop you. Quick, quick while mom's asleep. Step into the world <laughs> and become your former self. <laughs> what is what is that cup? Yeah, give me some of the top shelf water. Now tell me what you see. Are you going to make her pee herself? Is Maisie Williams if she didn't get the the Game of Thrones job? Qu question mark, I guess. I'm Elizabeth. That's what you were going to ask, isn't it? Yes. Being right. It's a gift and a burden. Where's Dr. Decker? Oh, it's a crossover episode. You don't know, do you? It's okay. I was just being polite. It's nice to see a new face. What did he tell you about me? Uh... Glass. Ah. My drinking problem. Yes, that's my cover story. Actually, I probably do drink too much. It's quarantine. Let's play a game, Doctor. Uh, sure. A game You're within a game? For a therapist. You think of something, then I'll get it. Okay. You're thinking about waves. That's not really fair. You only gave like me three ocean. options. Don't say anything. One step ahead of you? I mean, you haven't said anything since you arrived. Do you believe me now? That I can read your mind? You know, I'm just gonna tell you what I think you wanna hear. Good. You believe me? I lose a lot of friends right about now. Something happened at work. The dry cleaners in town. I can't switch it off. As soon as I lock eyes with a person, I get their thoughts. Yo, you don't need a therapist. You need a freaking exorcist. I'd like to be a brain surgeon, but I didn't apply myself enough. I am pretty nimble with an iron, though. Anyway, there's this guy who walks. I in told the you it's it's this Arya Stark the with needle. The zipper, and all he's thinking when he drops them off is Sharon can't pick these up. Sharon can't pick these up. So he starts screaming at me that he needs the hour service, or he'll have me fired. So I call the manager. <laughs> Sharon, Sharon, where's me effing trousers, Sharon? I guess Sharon, who doesn't want to pick them up, is his wife or girlfriend? 
Ozzy. Either way, he clearly doesn't want her to see the stain. But Sharon is also the name of my manager. I call Sharon over anyway. Sharon! 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 This guy's face is a picture, but he's holding it together. Sharon comes over preoccupied. She's thinking about the washing machines. She is the manager, so she normally does that, but this time was different. She was thinking about Nisha spinning away in one of them. What? <laughs> She put your friend in the washing machine? The dry cleaning machines are big. You can fit someone in quite easily. You could probably fit a small person into a normal washing machine, actually. If they really tried. Anyway. The store manager here shouting and comes over. The customer, let's call him... Ozzy? Ed. Says that we Ed Sharon? advertising something we can't deliver. Says he's a lawyer and he'll sue us. The store manager, whose name I intentionally forget, it's Sharon. says he'll sort it out. Sharon, in the meantime, has gone ashen. I lock onto Sharon's eyes, and I see it again. Nisha, spinning away in a machine. At this point, I'm guessing Sharon has a fantasy about killing her? Mmm, guess again. Ed finally gives in, throws his suit at me, and leaves. There's so many moving sentence. parts in this story. Can you work your magic hands over his trousers? Come on, and then you're throwing in innuendos He's like that? Topless, in a hot tub, but with way bigger breasts. And some other things I'd rather not remember. Knowing people's thoughts eats your soul. Um. Fine. I guess I painted the picture. You might as well think it. What? Thanks for letting me wear a bra, though. They're still too big. Anyway, I take it round back to start working on it. <laughs> And that's when I see her. Sharon. Nisha. Oh no. Like a ragdoll in a hurricane. Living in a Just movie. Spinning inside this big machine. Her face smashing against glass. So she put her in the machine. Blood pouring. In the out middle of the workday. It wasn't like after hours. She's a mess. Is that like like 10 a.m. You you put her in there. ring maybe yes a ring good i need you to get it for me do you understand i understand <laughs> it's well, a, it's a brain heist <laughs> we'll be back with more of monroe's past life in just a moment what's going on i'm helping ellis uncover her past why does she need to get this ring Oh, it's just a technique I use. I think you should bring her back now. It would be dangerous at this point. Then do it at whatever point it won't be. Quiet. I'm trying to concentrate. <sighs> Sounds like the start of Passing Me By by Farside. Oh, oh, it's uh, some more, okay. Uh, rip. Nisha kissed me once, so... I slapped her. That's what I expected when I clicked on the tombstone. Oh, dude, a hit marker! Who would want to kill Nisha? I guess... Sharon? Sharon? She was tried and convicted, so... <laughs> I 
I saw Nisha's body in the machine. Yeah. Her eyes were still open. Crying blood. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> but I looked into them and... There was peace. Yeah. Nothing else. That's how I want to go. Just peace. Just put me in and turn the dial to heavy duty. Send me what off this Nisha mortal coil. <sighs> Nisha thought about Jared. Oh, now we got a Jared involved. Okay. She hated him, but she also wanted to sleep with him at the same time. It's pretty common. I'm sure there's an interesting scientific term for it. Horny. Yeah. Angry sex. Or anger sex. I'd probably take either right now. Lady! We're talking about a murder here. Sharon's in a psychiatric hospital now. Great news. They arrested Sharon for Nisha's murder. Sentenced to 18 years. And on Why the 18th birthday? Is that enough? Maybe murder should be punishable by death. Uh, <laughs> People don't change, do they? They just get worse. I don't know about that. I watched the trial from the gallery. Not many people made eye contact with me, but Sharon did. She was imagining me in a hot tub. She wanted to die. Really die. I don't think she killed Nisha. What? <laughs> Sharon's defense. I didn't do it. She said Jarrett killed Nisha. The Umbrella Man. Who the hell is the Umbrella Man? Jarrett's the Umbrella Man. Oh, thank you. It's a nickname. We were on a work stew and it started raining and then Jared pulls out this tiny umbrella out of nowhere. That's how they get, you got then a nickname for life. Any girl stupid enough to duck under it. Hence, Umbrella Man. I did see Sharon once after the trial. She didn't talk. But in her head, all I could see was Nisha going round and round. Her mind was literally stuck like a broken record. Sharon's fingerprints were all over the machines. And her husband was having sex with Nisha. This is one heck of a yarn. Needed. Nobody saw her do it, though. <laughs> she just didn't have a good enough lawyer. People with money get away with murder all the time, though. Don't they? Um, all the time? No. Sometimes, yes. Is there anything rich people can't buy? Uh... Nisha worked for Sharon as a housemaid. That's how she met the husband. It's so cliche. Nisha was desperate for money, and he was desperate for attention. Did she clean, though? Nisha was good at cleaning. What can I say? Often I'd go to the back of the machines to hoover the lint trays out, and Nisha was there with Jared, hoovering away already. I understand. <laughs> Is this uh, her last life? I don't understand. I told anyone this, but Nisha charged Sharon's husband for sex. Oh, here we go. Another wrinkle. I mean, she said she would have done it anyway, but since there was a chance of getting paid. Make his pockets Sharon hurt. Would you pay someone to have sex with you, Doctor? Well, this is an easy one. People pay people to have sex with them all the time. I'm not judging. Just not. I'm just cheap. 
they do it expecting <coughs> love or opportunity, time, companionship or orgasms. All right. Um, lady? Nope. Washing machine. They closed down the store for a while so the real cleaners could come in. They got rid of all the blood. It wasn't just blood. <laughs> Her skull had split open and was grating against the metal drum. Some of her teeth. Sorry, Doctor. What did you want to know? How much of the story's left? Yeah. Dry cleaning machines have huge locks. <laughs> There's no way of shutting yourself in. You really have to get a friend to help. Or manager. Back. Perchloroethylene. It's what they use in dry cleaning machines. <laughs> but Nisha didn't drown. The spin cycle broke her spinal cord. So she was paralyzed for a few minutes while her face mashed into everything. Shock probably got her first. You know, like, I'm I'm just not sure what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just not sure what... <laughs> where, where this fits into the context of the original episode. Actually, hers and Nisha's. The police thought she'd struggled against the machine trying to fight Sharon. But what about what Ed's pants? Been? What, what does this have to do with Ed's trousers? I'm allergic to nuts. Is this definitely normal milk? I cannot say for certain that it's normal milk. Um, I didn't pour it. The milk's a bit funny? Maybe it's on the turn. Well, down the hatch. <clears throat> Clown. Monroe, you're back. Oh, no. Oh. She can't hear you. What's wrong with her? You can go in after her. Just sit down, please. How can I go in after her? I'd have to get in her brain. <laughs> I'm very good at what I do. That's why I've got a 35 square foot shop on a side street. Yeah, he's, he's so suggestible. <laughs> There's a good boy. Yo, what if she's Nisha and she's trying to solve her own murder right now? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what? I didn't really think that one through. You want to see my ring? What? Don't remember wearing one. What the frick? Shall I take it off? There's something written inside it. <laughs> Most extraordinary. Does it have an inscription? Four, two, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Ah, one of a kind. Oh, and we're, okay, we're back now. Uh, the Umbrella Man. Oh, we're not even close to being done, huh? 
<laughs> Jared. The Umbrella Man. Yep, I remember. He's weird. Like a spider. <laughs> what? Sharon ducked under his umbrella that time. Mm, Sharon and Jared. Her body and kind of rested under her breast. Everyone knew he was touching it. And Sharon just gave a weak smile and wriggled away. I tried to read his mind, but it was like a stereogram. Jared's mind was a mess of colored dots that didn't make any sense. I never knew what he was thinking, ever. There's only one other person I know that's like that. It's me. Are you trying to say that I don't understand my own mind? I come from a long line of overthinkers. Or maybe I don't. Well, that's our time. His facial expression didn't change. Nothing. It was like he was wrapping his arms around his prey. He didn't seem to be particularly enjoying touching her breast, just... the science. <laughs> anyway, back to Nisha. Jared quit after the murder. Well, so did I, to be fair. Well... I've kind of quit everything now. Aww. That's sad. I'm not suicidal. Just... need to live on a different planet or something. I saw Jared in the machine room with Nisha just before she died. I don't want to talk about it. Eh, too bad. Nisha was asking for it, wasn't she? Pardon me? I mean, if your partner's cheating on you, you murder their fling. Right? Mm. Exactly. <laughs> Excuse me, I hit no. She'd have killed her husband for sure. Why start with Nisha? Ah. It doesn't make any sense. Or just left. You don't, nobody has to die necessarily. I think Jared killed Nisha. The Umbrella Man? I told you about the Umbrella Man. She hated him. And yet. But in a lady doth protest too much kind of way. Maybe he killed her. I already said that Jared killed Nisha, or something did. Do you... Believe you? No. Believe in the supernatural? No. It's not science, is it? Yeah, it's not like touching a lady's breast. Jared... <laughs> Nisha. Or did he? Is Jared the name of the dryer? I don't know where we're at anymore. Jared was the last person to see Nisha alive. Then why does Sharon see Nisha in the dryer? It doesn't make any sense to me. Gift, as Dr. Decker calls it. If you can't help people with it. It's a curse. Doctor, I'm sorry, I need, I need to, to go. go. I'm being... <laughs> oh no. Ripped. Sorry. I don't know what I'm saying. Sorry. See ya. Ah, uh, my master plan. In an hour. <laughs> has finally come to pass by using you as conduits to a past life I have solved the murder of Nisha maybe and Jared the spider who is also the umbrella man 
will be brought to justice. And you're going to take his wallet? Come on. That should cover it. See myself out. She was Australian the whole time. Or she's from New Zealand. Thanks for the kish. Dr. Decker. On that note, here's a message from our sponsor that you're sure to enjoy. The police are looking for Miss Baratsky. It's a shame she didn't stick around. Was she even licensed? <laughs> she came highly recommended. She's a licensed <laughs> past life therapist? Herself, when she knocked on the door yesterday morning. You let a complete stranger take over my body? I didn't know what she was going to do. I feel so violated. I can't even tell our listeners. We were robbed. She literally took my wallet and your purse. I know. That was everything I had. And that wasn't all she took. What else is gone? My adoption papers. <laughs> what? My adoption papers are missing. I didn't know you were adopted. Well, I am. I'm not ashamed to say it. Sorry, Po, I, I wasn't suggesting that. It's unsettling when someone takes something so personal. Why are you keeping them Just on your person? Just who she is. A past lives travel agent who robbed us whilst we were dreaming. But it wasn't a dream. You were there. You and me. Yes, just like Wizard of Oz. Maybe the reason the people looked familiar is because you made it all up yourself. So, are we dreaming now or is this real? I can't tell anymore. Want me to give you a squeeze? No, this is real. How can you be so sure? Because in my dreams you're much more of a charmer. And you're not adopted. Too soon, Paul. Too soon. Next time on Are we ever gonna find out what happens with Jared the Umbrella Man? You're live on air, line one. That was like a half hour <laughs> bit of exposition. Like a wolf. He said it was a hairy animal. Size of a man. And the moon was full. We're going werewolf hunting. I'm Casper Light. You have to stay away from Wolf Lane. I'm sorry. You have no idea what's at stake. Dark nights. With Pearl and Monroe. How about that? <sighs> um. I mean, this is the telling one right here. 38% <laughs> of people have now had their data sold to the intelligence agency in their country. All right, next next episode then. Yeah, twenty five percent of people said they would murder their partner's fling as well. I was role-playing as Dr. Decker. I'm hoping it all comes together at some point. I got some bad news for you. I think it's just gonna keep spiraling off. I don't. I don't think there's anything that wraps this up. I think you just accept Dark that we're nice. we're spinning yeah. off. Every story is gonna create unresolved side stories. Bless me, Father Poe, for I have sinned again, Munro. Instant it's horny. Only been a week. I know. I just can't stop myself. What is it this time? Uh. I've been lustful. Munro, I'm shocked. Lustful for our listeners. Yeah, I'm shocked too that anyone listens to this damn show. I just can't get enough of them. Hear that, listeners? She's insatiable. I really am. You'd better not leave her hanging. Phone in now. 
and tell and us donate. what naughty things you've been up to in the confession room. Now remember, callers, no last names, no strings attached, and no consequences. Just call in to confess and let us absolve you of all of your sins. It's cheaper than therapy. And almost as effective. This isn't blasphemous, is it, Monroe? This seems like a, like a Grand God, Theft Auto radio not. station. Excellent. Oh, we have a caller on line one. Line one, you're through to the confession booth. Oh, yeah. You're live on air, line one. What's your gas your bill's light. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Beck. Welcome, Beck. Spill forth the burning secrets of your tormented soul. He means, what do you want to confess? I, um, crashed my boss's car. Oh, no. That's terrible. Were you hurt? No, no, but the, uh, the car was, uh... Totaled. It was a Rolls. Ugh. Wow. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really bad. Well, how did it happen? Were you swerving to avoid something? Yeah, there was an animal in the road. It was uh really hairy. It must have been uh, a bear or something <laughs> else because it was huge. A hairy bear. As big as a human. Honestly, maybe bigger. I remember because it was a full moon. What happened to the animal? I ran off. I don't think it was hurt, but I did hear howling. Howling? This is bait. Yeah, like a like a wolf. <clears throat> like um, ow! Well, that was terrible, <laughs> obviously, but like a wolf. Wow, that sounds mysterious, doesn't it, Poe? It does indeed. Nah, it's Thank typical you bear for behavior. Yes, thank you, Beck. It sounds like you're still traumatized by your experience, but I'm glad you weren't physically hurt. Father Poe says, You are forgiven. Okay. And we'll be back for more confessions after this message. Well, that was kind of strange, wasn't it? Poe? You don't have to use yes, the baby voice. We're not I on get the air anymore. Is angling for some. Really? Seemed genuine to me. It's her redemption yeah. papers. No, I'm being silly. You're not being silly, Alice. I suspect he was trying to make us think the same thing. He said it was a hairy animal. The size of a man. And the moon was full. You don't think there could be werewolves in August, do you? Could you just complete one show without unlikely. incident? Poe, you're not going to believe this, but there's a full moon tonight. Maybe we should leave early and check it out. Don't you have other plans? It's your birthday tomorrow. Of course. I wasn't planning on having an early night. Let me call Gwendolyn. <laughs> Welcome back, listeners. This is Dark Nights with Poe. And Monroe. And we're in the confession booth. The confession booth. Line two, you're through to Father Poe. Bless me, Father Poe, for I have sinned. What is your name, child? Casper. And what dark anguish burns your mortal soul? Casper. He means, what would you like to confess? Nothing. <laughs> There's actually something else I wanted to talk about. Okay. Off the air. Oh my god, not again! You have to wait um, a little while, Casper, <laughs> until after the show. Well, I could wait until then, but that might not give you enough time. Time for what? To save yourself. Oh, click on Wikipedia. Well, you're in luck, Casper, as I have a story queued up. Listeners will I've be got the werewolf hostage. This spooky tale. Okay, Casper. It's just us now. What are we saving ourselves from this time? Don't go to Wolf Lane. We're, We're not doing a show! Well, we might be. The werewolf, remember? Yes, you are. But you shouldn't. And why is that, Casper? Because it will be the last time anyone sees you. 
Why? I can't give details, but something bad will happen if you go to Wolf Lane tonight. <sighs> you know, if you want us to take you seriously, perhaps elaborate on the something bad will happen bit. There's a billion other places you could go, and I'm just asking <laughs> you to avoid one. But if you have a death wish, go to Wolf Lane. Is that a death threat, Casper? No. This is your future. Trust me. I know. Because you have a time machine? Because... I was there when it happened. Well, we're certainly putting the dark and dark nights tonight, August. Maybe we should stop taking calls. Maybe we should cancel the show. Around. What would this show be without... The heady mix of terror and titillation. That's uh, fifty percent of our shows. We get well, a this radio very thinly veiled death threat on air. For one night, which is good, because it's time for Betty buys. Sweet dreams, August. Thank you for listening. Yes, and remember, don't have nightmares with Poe and Monroe. Another eight-minute show in the books. So what do you think? I think it's only a matter of time before Casper tries to kill us. I agree, it's only a matter of time. just an attention seek. So am I. I'm not trying to kill anyone, though. So, what do you want to do about it? I don't know. They spelled he the word wrong? really threaten us, so it probably doesn't warrant getting the police involved. Of course, why get the police involved? Are you sure? No. I just wish... I wish we could have one simple, uneventful, boring night. I don't think you'd like boring, Miss Monroe. You're right. Which is why we're going werewolf hunting. Casper didn't put you off? No. Telling me not to do something makes me want to do it twice as hard. Really? Well, definitely don't do the whistle swinger again. You like the whistle swinger, don't you? No. Even if it's twice as hard? We're not going to make it out of here if you keep talking like that. You really think we can see werewolves? It would be foolish to rule it out altogether. I know it's almost your birthday, but... It's, I'm well, adopted. A full moon waits for no man. Or wear a woman. Exactly. I guess it could be romantic. To get killed? Me, huddled in the car, looking at the stars. Driving past they the bars. Wolf Lane's the best place in August for Stargate. Do they? Reminiscing There's about Tars. Any light pollution. That must be why the werewolves like it. What about you know who? I've told her I'll be late. Just late? Well, we'll see. You go ahead. <laughs> Voldemort. <I'm just> <laughs> Ruka. Hi. Sorry, one minute. Okay, I'm going. Hi, it's Monroe. No, no, you look great. Oh. Totally yeah. We'll see you soon. Oh. Huh? It's all right, Alice. You don't need to do that. It's not a hold up. I beg to differ. <laughs> it's Dan's aim. This is for your own protection. Who are you? I'm Casper Light. I'm from the show. You just called into our radio show. Oh no. I must have come back again. Are you okay? No. This means I've already failed. Looper? What is it you want, exactly? I work for a company called Coit Industries. They do experimental stuff. A scientist? No, I'm M&M. &M. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Mishaps and malfunctions. We clean up messes. I'm here to save you. <laughs> it's Marshall save Mathers. What? <laughs> Hello. Disassembly? You have to stay away from Wolf Lane. They are scared. We're not going to Wolf Lane. 
You told us behind my computer. So we're going straight home, isn't that right, Monroe? Yeah. yeah. I'm so tired. <laughs> See, there's no need for any of this. Please put the gun down. I am not. Hmm. I'm sorry. You have no idea what's at stake. Don't try it. I'm not gonna it shoot you. Badly. I'm here to kill you to stop you, you from getting disassembled. Uh, okay. I'm throwing scissors. Oh, let's go. God. <laughs> he's he's so demoralized. Look, he, he's shell-shocked. He doesn't know what to say. You came back from the future and you can't win a game of rock, paper, scissors? Are you sure this is wise? The guy was crazy, Poe. Maybe he was on drugs. Maybe he heard us talking about Wolf Lane on the show and thought he'd have some fun. I suppose you're right. Besides, you said the police will pick him up. It's not like he's gonna follow us here. Well, he definitely knows where we're going. Maybe we shouldn't be out here on our own. You're not afraid of werewolves, are you? I didn't have you down as the werewolf hunting type either. I like to keep you on your toes, which reminds me. Oh no. It's the whistle. A chocolate. I thought we might be here a while. When did you have time to make this? During the last break. But that was before the call-in. What else did I bring? Let me see. Wine? Nighty. Uh... We'll go with the wine on this one. Don't drink and drive, Monroe. No, silly. That's for after. After? I might have something planned. Alice Monroe, is this whole thing a ruse? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. <laughs> oh no, it's... <laughs> it's Casper, what should we do? He's like, I meant rock! I meant rock! I had some time to think about it, I should have thrown rock, okay? insane? The, well, the gun was fake. How do you know? It was made of plastic. My point is, I don't think he's trying to hurt us. Oh, he's genuinely trying come to on. A moment ago, you were calling him crazy. I, I... Do what you feel you must. Of course. You can't, you can't be, be here. here. Wait, Jinx. what? Poe's already called the police. They're looking for you. Go home, Casper. You know who I am? You're kidding, right? Please, I'm trying to save your life. I'm going to open this door now, and you're going to save all of us. Lock it, Alice. Lock it. I did warn you. Now's not the time. Shouldn't have told me your plan, worry, dummy. You're so gullible. For one day believing that you'll leave your wife for me. <laughs> hmm. So, there are no werewolves? No. They're partying with August vampires. And you paid back to call in? No. I told him it was an audition. But why? It's a great question. I needed to give you a reason to stay. And Casper? Nothing to do with me.
It's your birthday. I'm supposed to surprise you. You did. Just not in a good way. It's barely started. You've got the whole day to look forward to. Sorry, honey. I can't come home tonight. <laughs> it's my co-host's birthday. Yeah, sure, why not? You're in for a penny, in for a pound, really I guess. You want me to stay? Isn't it obvious? Then I'll stay. I will leave her one day. Oh. <laughs> what turned you into such a monster? <laughs> what? Gwendolyn is lovely. Gwen, she's not so nice. Because she's unfaithful? I only caught her that once. Absolved! Virginia caught her. Who the she hell is Virginia? Well. Oh, okay. She was mine. Is this a math problem? I never apologized. Gwen gave up her career. Gwen gave up her youth. Gwen sleeps around. Gwen married so a podcaster. Do you still love her? Yes. More wine, Monroe? Hit me. Well, it's eight o'clock. <laughs> really? This is your August update. Brought it back to like a mature story at the end. an explosion last night that claimed the life of entrepreneur Venice Pavel. 29-year-old Miss Pavel was the newly appointed CEO of Intervine Futures, a company whose breakthrough research in quantum mechanics promised consumer teleportation within the next five years. A gas leak on Wolf Lane. The weather tonight will be clear and dry with highs of 12 and lows of 8. And that's your August update. What? A gas leak on Wolf Lane? We need to check these updates before we go live. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I'm not sure that I believe any of that. You think Casper caused the explosion? Probably. He just didn't want us on his conscience. Why? Why not kill all of us? I don't have a crystal ball or a time machine. <laughs> I don't know. Teleportation. They're so obsessed with time machines. Competition. He said he was saving us. Maybe he didn't. Maybe Miss Pavel wouldn't have been at Wolf Lane if we'd been there. Or if we'd have been there, we'd have saved her. Well, August police can deal with all of that now. August police need to outsource. Good thinking. And your brain is as big and wonderful as your heart. You shouldn't have. <laughs> it's from Claire's. Hurry. It's time for our first caller. Line one, you're on the air. Yo, it's Casper, dude. Only two people call into this show. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Welcome back to Radio August Treasure Hunt, sponsored by August Museum. Good news, Monroe only has one more capsule to plant. Don't worry, you'll not be hungry for much longer. If you can fall out of love, we can fall out of here. She doesn't want you to get out. <laughs> what? She wants to eat souls. <laughs> Dark Nights. With Poe and Monroe. I kind of don't know what to say. Um... 
There's a real bait and switch on that whole werewolf stuff, right? But then in that, so they string you along with the werewolf thing for a long time. We're gonna see a werewolf. We're gonna see a werewolf. By the way, if you follow the story beat, just work with me. This might take a couple of minutes. It's confession booth with Poe and Monroe. Beck calls in. I crash my boss's car. Only wait a minute. I buried the lead. I crashed it because an enormous hairy man or larger than man sized animal was in the middle of the road. Also, it was a full moon. Okay, we started with confession booth. Now we're off on the werewolf story. In the middle of the werewolf story, it turns out the werewolf shit was all made up so that she could convince Poe, a man with absolutely no redeeming or attractive qualities whatsoever, Beyond perhaps his uh, his appearance, depending on what your tastes may you know be interesting for you. Um, almost got myself out of that one. Uh, so that he could have a reason to spend the night with her, despite the fact that he's also married. But don't worry, because his wife is cheating on him as well, and also his daughter, who we didn't even know existed, caught them. But by the way, the whole time a time traveler. And different multiverse iterations of a time traveler keep trying to stop them from going to hunt the werewolf on Wolf Lane. And nobody knows what the hell's going on, but he keeps showing up and he's really bad at rock, paper, scissors. And then, by the way, at the end, this company was about to invent quantum teleportation, uh, but sadly they blew up. And maybe Casper did it because he works at the competition. I don't know. Maybe. Doesn't matter. He got her a necklace. Everything's good. Like, what happened? It was like a 15 minutes. It took like 90 turns. And at the end, they played it off like it was like an interpersonal, serious drama. Anyway, next episode. I can't wait to hear how this all gets wrapped up in the finale. The season finale of Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Oh, they got a big cast on this one. They got a huge cast on this one. <laughs> Maybe we'll finally see Jared, the Umbrella Man. Dark Knights. It's got a great cast. And your head was all the way up it. Hoo-ha. Ho. Sorry, sorry. Nice vest. I am worse. Extraordinary. What is your wish? <laughs> A wish, you say? Because your wish. You think. Hmm. <laughs> it's, I, it's, uh, okay, sure, why not? I wish that Alice Munro never stops loving me. Your wish is granted. This painting, sponsored by the How NSA. Does it work? It's magic, isn't it? Yes, some kind of sensor. Is this Gary Oldman Come method on. acting as Ego Raptor? Ask it something. Okay. Um, what time is it? <laughs> the Equinox. Huh. I believe it is. Sometimes she's cryptic. <laughs> You're telling me. How about this then, Rose? Who killed What's Nisha? The square root of 1,296. Oh. Calculating. 
She's confused. I, I'll do a reboot. Recalculate. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's wonderful. I'm sure August will love it. Museums aren't what they used to be, Pam. No. <laughs> They're much rarer than ever before. Too kind. Let me get those prizes for you. Of course. Happy to help. Let's call it payment for that wish. <laughs> yes. In hindsight, I shouldn't have will be pleased with my wish. revealed my deepest, darkest secret <laughs> on this promotional visit. 36. Oh, she's got a, she's got a Pentium 2 chip in there. It just took a while. <laughs> powered by Celeron. Thirty six. Wait a minute, this isn't the grocery store. <laughs> Disappointed! Wait a minute, this isn't my world. Good luck, little feller. Treasure buried. Remind me why this is my job again? You have smaller fingers than me, Monroe, and you can get into smaller spaces. So it's nothing to do with you having the warm, cozy studio then? Absolutely not. Uh, how many capsules to go? Uh... Uh-oh. No! One, I think, but I've just dropped it. You could just tag its location there. Oh, it's okay. I found it. The universal well, sign for I'm talking. Going live in three, two... Welcome back, listeners. Good news. Monroe only has one more capsule to plant. That's right, Poe. I'm almost done. And then our listeners can start trying to find them. Yes. Thanks to the generosity of August Museum, you could find a buried treasure. Uh, tell them what's in the capsules, Monroe. Only the best treasure of all, Poe. A free family ticket to August Museum. Nope. And that's not all. One lucky capsule has a secret treasure in it, hidden by the curator himself. I wonder what that is, Poe. Come on. Easy choice. Perhaps it's edible, like fine caviar. Great. I've been hiding fish eggs. Did one of them feel different to the others, Monroe? No, not really. Well, handle them carefully, in case they open a portal to another world. Could do with one. Okay then, sounds like Monroe is getting a little frosty. Time for these words from our sponsors. <laughs> Remember, Monroe, if you speak with a smile, people know you're smiling. Uh-oh. It's mansplaining. I hate you. Wow! Does that sound happy? Actually, yes, it does. You can tell what kind of AirPods are those, dude? Dehydrated. I think I'm gonna keep this last one, Poe. Uh, but we're supposed to be definitely hiding against the rules. I know, but we could give it away live on air. I suppose. Okay. Bring it back with you then. On my way. Welcome back, listeners. It's time to find the treasure. Get the geocaching app. Search for hashtag Poe and Monroe, no spaces, and join the hunt. If you see Monroe, tell her dinner's in the dog. Because you cooked it. I'm an exceptional cook. Monroe, on the other hand, 
burns everything. Like our friendship. Sorry, Monroe. You know I love you, really. Let's have a little break whilst Monroe gets back to the studio. We just came back! Yes, good luck. <laughs> How many mid-rolls are in this Rose, thing? You'll not be hungry for much longer. Uh oh. 36, 36, 36, 36. Sorry about the mood. It just felt lonely. You're not alone, Alice. You've got me. I don't know, do I? Of course you do. Do you know how much I care for you? And your wife? It's complicated, you know that. The thing is, I'm not sure it is. Well, you don't follow me on what Facebook? What are you saying? Nothing. I'm just tired, I guess. What we have is special. The most special thing. A podcast. And your marriage? Ah, it's okay. Us marriage. I'm simultaneously married and not married at the same time. No, Poe, you're married. There's a piece of paper that states exactly where you are at this current point in time. Alice, we're going live. Let me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Three, two... Welcome back to Radio August Treasure Hunt, sponsored by August Museum. If you're going to put it on air, don't do it in a sponsored stream. Come on. For you lovely listeners to find, and one of them was sealed by the curator himself. Find that capsule and you'll win. A hot dinner date with me, Alice Monroe. Monroe, that's... What if it's a girl? Oh. I hadn't thought about it. We don't that. have too many female listeners. I would love that, actually. Did you mean hot dinner as in the food is hot? Or a hot date? Well, I suppose that depends on who wins, doesn't it, Poe? Astounding. Monroe is offering a dinner date with the first person who finds the curator's capsule. Uh, you pay. I'm on a podcaster's salary. Oh, and spoiler alert, I wasn't that great at hiding them. Finding them should be easy. Much like getting a date with you, then. You could always try and find it yourself, Poe. Wow! But I already have so much of you already, Monroe. Oh, look. We have our first caller. It's Frankie. I found all nine already. Hello, it's Eric. Eric Planner. Hello, Eric. What's happening? Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, Monroe. Hi, Eric. Hi. I am such a big fan. Oh, I'm doing a heart shape with my fingers, but you can't see it. I found a capsule. Which one? Outside the doctor's surgery, underneath the bench. That's one of ours. Crack it open, Eric, and let us know what's inside. Okay. Well, while Eric's trying to work out what he's won, tell us more about the doctor's surgery, Monroe. Okay. You it's go there when you're practice. sick. I don't actually go there. But I'm sure it's very nice. Where do you go? <laughs> no, you it's unexploded ordinance from World War I. I'm more of a holistic girl anyway. Okay, let's... Oh no, she's an anti-vaxxer. Uh, I wonder how Eric's doing. Eric? Eric, what did you find? Eric? I can't hear anything, Poe. Oh, his <laughs> phone ran out of battery. Uh oh, you hit the chunky capsule. Should we take the next one? That's where the painting swallows your soul. You're live on Radio August. I love you, Monroe. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Do I win a date? <laughs> sure, if you find the curator's prize. I'm at the railway crossing. I'm over to the capsule now. What was that? Sounds like he dropped the phone. He didn't even get their name. They'll be back on in a minute. Great. Why don't you tell us about the railway station while we wait? That's where you go to catch the train. August Railway Station was built in 1936. 
by the Thomas Moore Clay and Brick Company. The very first train route was between Birmingham and August and all the villages in between. It closed down about five years ago because, quite frankly, not many people wanted to come to August. Did I ever say that you're a know-it-all? We're running a not show air, but about local minutiae. Oh, I don't think Caller 2 is coming back. Maybe he ran out of minutes. Two in a row. If we lose three callers, that's a record. Well, there is one on the line. Third time lucky? That's what people say. Caller, you're live on Radio August. Hi, it's Jazz. I'm at the crossroads. Hey, Jazz, great to meet you. Have you found a capsule? Yep, it was by the post box. That's one of ours. Now, remember, once you've opened it, try not to lose battery or get cut off or disappear. I see you at the crossroads. Got it. Opening it now. And I'm gonna miss everybody. Gonna miss everybody. Seriously? This is too strange, Monroe. Life is strange, Poe. No, something's not right. What are you gonna do about it? Maybe we should open the capsule we've got. Don't jinx it. We've got a fourth caller. Let's try that. <laughs> uh, uh, fourth time lucky? Fine. No wonder it had such a huge cast. Four of four. You're live on Radio August. Hi, Paul. It's Izzy. Hello, Izzy. Uh, what's that short for? Izzy. Yes? It's, it's short for Izzy. That's my name. Silly me. Where are you, Izzy? I'm at the where is you, Ari? Where Huh, it's not in the bucket, is he? It is nearby, though. All right, now have a look. Please call in once you've found the capsule. Wow! Not when you're in the general vicinity. Found it! Excellent. Now, take a look inside and tell us what you find. Is he? Sorry. Oh, we thought we'd lost you. No, the lid was stuck. I'm opening it now. Is he? Is he? We should open our capsule, Monroe. Nope. Maybe someone's pranking us. To what end? I don't know. I believe instead we'll take another caller. Caller number five, you're live on Radio August. Hi, Monroe. It's Eddie here. Hello, Eddie here. What do you got for me? I've got a capsule. Which one? It's from the telephone box on High Road. That's one of ours. Although it's not a telephone box anymore. No, it's a, a defib thing. Yeah, that's used to resuscitate people who have had heart attacks. I know. Good. You think you're better than me? We'll be having one if we go on a date. Well, oh, no I'll take you out for right fish and chops. That we know of. Okay, wish me luck. Good luck, Eddie. Yes, good luck. Eddie? He sounded sweet. Sounded? Well, they're obviously all part of the same prank. What if something serious is happening to them, Monroe? Well, Maybe you could go caller and number six? Call. Or we could just open the capsule that's right in front of us. Don't you want to see where this is all going? To hell in a handbasket, I should imagine. Grumpy guts. This is on you, Monroe. I just can't stop. We've got callers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep it rolling. Caller 6, you're live. Not for very long. Hey guys, I'm Queenie. Hi Queenie, where are you at? Uh, I'm at the Mary August statue. It's a stunning piece. Oh, I think you're both stunning pieces. <laughs> pieces of shit. Queenie, that's sweet. Have you found a capsule yet? Yes, but I've been listening and I'm getting a bit worried about opening it. The plot thickens. Queenie, are you playing with us? I'd like to be. Well, then. You're the next caller on the horny show. Okay. Horn up. Another one bites the dust. She seemed quite eager to open it. Perhaps it is an elaborate prank after all. Only one way to, Only find, one out. Way to find out. Don't. <laughs> caller seven. Power caps you. Keep taking callers. Caller seven. Call You're on the air. Seven. 
Monroe is zero for six. Oh, I'm not sure what that means. Of course you don't. What's your name, caller? <laughs> it's Helena. And have you found a capsule? Yes. Yes, I have. I'm at Orchard Way, the Lover's Walk. The Lover's Walk? Monroe! Hey, Helena. What's the Lover's Walk? Oh, it's not really called that. It's just a nickname. Go on. It's just a lovely place to walk. It's a very discreet woods, Monroe, with lots of conveniently placed benches and tree stumps. Tree stumps? To sit on? Oh, that's so rude! What's he doing? He's being an idiot. Yes, I have a first degree in idiocy. Have you opened your capsule yet, Helena? Not yet. I'm doing it now. Just Didn't know what that's down. where it, what the stumps were for. Got speed. Helena? Can you hear me? So long. And good night. Well, there's only two capsules left to find. I still think we should open ours. We can do that afterwards. What if there's some big punchline for nine? I don't think so, Monroe, but you have the controls. All right, caller number nine, you're on the air. Caller eight. Hello, Monroe. I'm Arvin. Hello, Arvin. How are you today? Better for hearing you. And Poe, of course. Hello, Arvin. Uh, not, not so much Poe. All right. It is Jesse Cox. <laughs> I'd literally kill to go on a date with you. How many people? That's... Sweet? I think you're gorgeous. Okay, then. Shall I open the capsule now? Yes. Please do. Okay, Monroe. Wish me luck. Good luck, Arvin. Yes, Arvin. Let's hope the same fate that's literally struck seven people in a row before you somehow skips you this time. There's no need to be like that, Poe. He's already dead. Arvin? Arvin? I'm guessing he's opened the capsule, Monroe. Arvin. Arvin? Anybody there? He's not a ghost. How do you know? Thirty-six. We've only got one caller left. How did they find them so fast? We didn't even get to find out how Arvin found his. Maybe he just wants to be on the radio. If this turns into a meme, we'll be taking calls like this for the rest of our lives. Shushpo. Let's think. Uh, last call. Caller number nine. You're currently live on Radio August. Hey, it's Q. Hi, Q. Congrats, you found the last capsule. Did I? Yes, you did. We've already had a caller, so you must be the last. Wow, so is the curator prize still available? Well, actually... We lost a lot of those other callers. Uh, phone line issues. Okay, so it's still all to play for. Absolutely. Although I'd recommend not opening the capsule and bringing it to the station first. I'm actually at the graveyard, so that's quite a ways away. We can wait. Just let Q open the capsule, Poe. It's just a Don't human life. See what happens? Just let them do their thing. Fine. Fire away, Q. Break the capsule. And try to avoid death. Death? He's kidding. It's just that whenever someone's opened up a capsule so far... They've stopped talking to us. Why would they do that? We're kind of hoping you could tell us. I can video call if you want. Yes, please. Okay, wait. Uh, I'm on 3G, so it's not going to work Oh, here. no, at least she's not on 5G. Thanks for trying, Q. It's totally up to you whether you open your capsule or not. Q? Q? We've just lost nine people in a row mid-conversation. That's a Radio August record. Congratulations to everyone who found a capsule. We think. And we'll be back on the hour with the next August update. Until then, stay safe, August. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. Oh dear. Loot box. I don't like the sound of that. I just remembered I made a wish today. What did you wish for? 
It was trivial. I honestly can't remember. Did it have anything to do with these capsules? The curator did say something about the capsules being payment for the wish. And you're telling me this now? It just seemed like a little bit of fun at the time. The painting was talking. You made a wish with a talking painting. It's just an Arduino. Now you're saying it. that does sound a little suspicious, doesn't it? You think? Maybe I should go and see the curator again. I want to see what's in the capsule. Monroe, it could be dangerous. That's my little name, honey. Oh! The soul stone. We go! <laughs> We're trapped in the painting. Where are we, Bo? I don't know. But wherever we are, it looks pretty old. I wonder why we're here. What did you wish for? Um. Ah, yes. Go on. I wished that you'd never stop loving me. Hello, Miss Monroe, Mr. Pope. This is your wish. Are you Rose? Where are we? We're here. Hmm. That's funny, Rose. Where's here? Don't talk to me it? like I'm a child. I'm an immortal being. Can you let us out, please? No. No. You must love him. Forever. Let us out, or you're getting a smack, young lady. <laughs> Oh. Don't risk it. We need to work out what's going on. Adios, amigos. <laughs> nope. Stay. I, I lost my chance. <sighs> Adios, amigos. We get out. I don't think we're meant to, Alice. This is my wish. Passengers? Well, it's not my wish. How do I get out? Maybe there's something we can use in this room. Yeah, damn, dude. You really should have wished for something a little bit more ambitious. What are you looking for? I don't know. Oh no. Um yeah, yeah, the apple from episode one. Come on. You think I don't remember? If we're spending eternity here, I hope the menu's a la carte. Do we need to eat? I'm not hungry. Hmm. I'm not hungry either. That's unusual for you. What are you trying to say, Poe? Nothing, just, uh, you, um, tend to graze a lot. Graze? Like a cow? I love the way you eat. Sorry. I'm getting crabby. You did trap me I in a painting. Think... No. It's a good reason to be crabby. All right. The furniture and decoration in this place are eclectic. What does eclectic mean again? Diverse. A mix. It's basically an interior designer's nightmare. That's what I studied at college. Interior design? Yeah. I thought I'd decorate the apartments of the rich and famous when I got older. And did you? No. I was usually doing the walk of shame from them. Nice image. Girls gotta make mistakes.
He's just perpetually horned up, huh? What are you going to do with that? Pick the lock? There is no lock. Because there is no door. What's that behind you, then? I have a pen. I have an apple. All right, well, let's try a seashell then. Uh, the candle. Can't wait to see what amazing lore we have Maybe here. Maybe if we set fire to the place, she will set us free. That's not really an experiment I'd be into. She'd probably just let us burn. Well, that would be one way out. <sighs> Let's just do it and be legends. <laughs> Full send. Do you remember Huntington Beach? Yeah. You refused to go into the sea or take off your shoes. And as a consequence, I got shoes full of sand. You should take my advice more often. Hindsight's twenty twenty, Monroe. Didn't see this coming. What? I'm so sorry. So sorry. What happened? I thought if I hit you over the head, Rose would see that I didn't love you anymore and it would break the wish. I think I see where you're coming from. But when you crumpled to the floor... I felt so bad. Yes, perhaps didn't think that one quite far enough through. I'm so sorry, John. Are you okay? I'm fine, Alice. Just let me get to my feet. I just can't get the fog to clear. Are you sure? I'm sure. You... You can stay here. But I don't want you to fall, Poe. I'll be right behind you. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of. You you can stay here, okay? Where are you going? I think you may actually be onto something there, Monroe. I am? The wish. We need to break it. How do we do that? You have got to stop loving me. Who said I loved you anyway? I'm being serious, Alice. If you can fall out of love, we can fall out of here. So, you're just going to hurl insults at me? Not necessarily. I can undermine our relationship pragmatically. <laughs> it's already working. Hold that thought. Ah, right, back to this then. Are you a gold digger, Monroe? No. What money do you have anyway? So you're interested in how wealthy I am? No. Uh, do you like apples? How do you like them apples? Have I ever told you how stunning you look, Monroe? Where are you going with this poem? Just what happens when we get older? Retirement? I'm not sure I can love you as much when your looks go. I know you're being mean deliberately, Poe. Uh, uh, what if I smashed this vase? I cheated on my wife before, you know. No, I did not know that. Why don't you enlighten me? I sleep with all my co-stars. Wasn't one of them a guy? I sleep with all my co-stars. Yeah, of course you do. That's what you got from the vase, huh? Uh, 
Um, back to the apple. I lied about Mother's trick to get rid of memory. That's okay. You were comforting me. No, I just wanted you to shut up. <laughs> Are you enjoying that? Mission accomplished. Yeah. He got her. He got her. that one moved the needle a little bit. You could tell. Alice, why can't you be more clever? Because I swapped intelligence for modesty. So you're not very modest either. Funny. Please stop this. <laughs> no, this is it, Monroe. Get angry. Hey, I do hate you, you bastard! Silence. No more talking till I say. Dios de los I'll muertos. Kill both of you. Over and over again. She didn't say we couldn't see. This isn't real. It's not a thing. You don't have to rhyme in the conversation, oh, though. I'm practicing. There's something I've been keeping in. I'm not the man you dreamed I am. There's bodies in the basement. The basement. I take my life before I leave my wife. There's no escaping. Two, one, go. What just happened? I don't know. Were you... In a painting? Yes, we had the same dream. Maybe there were chemicals in the capsules. Yes, that caused a joint hallucination that lasted much longer than the time we've been away. Do you think all the capsules are the same? Probably. You go and get the remaining capsules. I'll visit the curator. You are so mean to me. Sorry, Monroe. Let's just go quickly whilst we still can. Hey, you take a sniff, that thing might still have some juice in it. Free Jesse. <laughs> Where's Arvin? And Izzy and Q? And Queenie. Sorry, August. Sorry. Sorry for what? Rose? Miss me? Cinco How are you de Mayo. Here? This whole place. It's my prison. That's Where are deep. the others? I ate them. <laughs> no. No, you didn't. You looking for this? Don't open it. I ate them. Be careful what you wish for, Manwo. <laughs> what? Mm. 
Nine residents of August have been reported missing. And they were all listeners looking for our geocached capsules. So, uh, our bed. There may be more capsules still out there. If you find one, please don't open it and turn it into the police immediately. In related news, <laughs> a man posing as the curator of August Museum is also wanted for questioning by the police. He's potentially dangerous, so do not approach him. Curator Jones is described as tall, dark, and mysterious. Sounds like you, Poe. Don't give people the idea it was me. Sorry. No. I can vouch for Poe's whereabouts last night. And most nights, actually. Uh, you, it's still on Can air. You tell them what happened, Monroe. I'm not sure they're ready. Let's do it anyway. August, we think the curator spiked those museum capsules. Just to be clear, imposter curated Jones, not actual curated tombs. As absurd as it sounds, there's the two curators. Seem to contain some kind of hallucinogenic drug. In a Wizard of Oz kind of way. Yes. We think those capsules had the power to make people believe they were being teleported. The drug activated when the capsule was opened. Our capsule took us to a strange place indeed. It was just a room, Poe. No, Monroe. I think we were in a painting. Okay. We were trapped. Because you'd made a wish. Uh-oh. I'm not sure I want to tell them about that bit, Monroe. Why are we telling them any of it? To stop them. Opening capsules if they ever find one. I think they've got that now. I'm sorry, Monroe, about, about all the things I said. Did you mean anything? This is a conversation you have off air. He said... Play the best song he doesn't love me anymore. in the world. Ah, yes. Let's take a quick break now, then, shall we? Ellis, ratings. You can't say things like that on air. Is that all you care about? Ratings? Uh, no. I, I thought that's what you cared about. Being a star, turning Radio August into your platform. That's not me, Poe. I care about you. <laughs> that's that's not me, Poe. Oh! Oh! Me? Oh! Yeah. Oh! I'm scared, Monroe. Of what? If I take it back, if, if that stupid wish somehow comes true again. That's just convenient, isn't it? We should have stayed in that room. Just the two of us. What about the missing people? The missing? <laughs> Whatever. The find them. They, they're not well, like they real people. Help. They don't even matter, I sort of. I responsible. We're both responsible. You don't know what happened. Just some delusion. Well, I'm going to help look. Are you coming with me? Or do you just care about Radio August? You. <laughs> I always choose you. Happy now? Oh, <laughs> he's turned the stream off. Where to, Monroe? Adventure, Poe. What? Always adventure. I thought you were trying to save the the nine missing people. <laughs> what? This is aligned in such a way that they're gonna do a blooper reel on the left. Who the heck is Tombs, dude? The curator? What about the real curator? Who was the real curator? He was the real one. What the? Man, this is a lot of credits. This is like a Ubisoft ah, game. Nice. With Poe and Monroe. I'm just losing my mind that 18% of people 
chose Radio August. For what reason? Spipmaster420, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the the gifted subscriptions. Dunk at dunk. Um You know what? I just realized that's Poe. I thought that was like an 85 year old man. The way this was this shot was lit, I thought that maybe it was like Monroe's dad or something. Insert irony, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the gifted subs as well. I mean, honestly, here's the thing, right? Was it the best FMV game we've played? It's up there, for sure. B because it's not... I mean, have you seen Night Trap? Have you seen... Double Switch? Have you seen Corpse Killer? I, I will say... Oh, Ranger451, thank you as well. <laughs> it's no Corpse Killer. It's no Corpse Killer, let me put it that way. However, um, I, I love that there's modern FMV coming out. And I do think if you were into... Well, I don't think it's quite as good as Contradiction, honestly. Um, I mean, Can I tell you, like the honest-to-goodness feeling about the game that I have is that I think it suffers from its episodic nature because kind of all of the stories ended up resolving in a very strange way that didn't make any sense and kind of came out of nowhere. I feel like, you know, in contradiction, in the shape-shifting detective, it's like one, two, or three hour long story that went places. I'm watching the, the trailer now and I've realized there is a way to save John, indeed. <laughs> Yeah, the episode where it's just the Dr. Decker crossover, I'm not sure about that one. H having not seen, or having not played Dr. Decker, I am, uh, that one really felt like it kind of didn't make any sense to me. But it's interesting, it's ambitious in, in some ways. Um, not my favorite, but, but... I'm happy I played it. Let's put it that way. You don't need me to read reviews. Reviews are like 86% positive. People who like these games really like it. If you If you like the Daeki Studio stuff, you, you like this. People love campy stuff in the FMV community, myself included. Anyway, we got five minutes. <laughs> it's like the most awkward amount of time to have left on a stream. Can't do a monster train run in five minutes. Can't do a uh, war zone run in five minutes. You could do a little dance. That's enough for Warzone if, you, Warzone if you're playing. Brat. I don't even know if I could lose a game of Warzone. It takes like a minute to boot, then a minute to queue. Then you've got a roughly a minute pre-game lobby. And they don't even let you drop out of the plane for like 20 seconds. And then it takes 10 seconds to hit the ground. If I if I didn't pull my shoot, it might be possible. It might be possible. <laughs> well, I am stalling for time because I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to play. It's, it's, we're gonna end in four minutes now. I guess we could, you know, let me let me go to Steam real quick. I'm just searching Steam FMV. Let's see what else we got on here. No, not new and trending, please. Uh, upcoming. Well, there are... There's like eight upcoming FMV games. Well, there's seven. 
Command and Conquer Remastered Collection. I would never play it on stream, but I would watch all the Tim Curry videos. We are going to the one place capitalism is not corrupted. Spice! You know that one? That one's pretty good. Crush, Kill, and Destroy Extreme. Not sure about that one. Jessica. This looks like um, a Telling Lies sort of game. How about this? General Horse and the Package of Doom. Or what about this one? Border Collie game. Oh, here we go. Svoboda 1945. This, this seems like the kind of game you don't want to make fun of. How about Road to Nowhere? Planned release date some... Oh, dude! Jenks has joined the cast of Road to Nowhere. Road to Nowhere tells the story of Cole Bishop, a renowned introvert and successful software developer whose life is torn apart by scandal. Though innocent, he is haunted by personal demons, abandoning his perfectly adequate life in hopes of finding himself on the open road. Despite the help of his psychologist, Cole spirals into depression as he moves from town to town. Destination nowhere. Yo. Featuring the voice acting talent of Rupert Booth, a.k.a. Jenks. Anna Rosa Butler from The Shapeshifting Detective. It's not FMV, though. It's like voice acted. All right. General Horse and the Package of Doom comes out June 23rd. It's a space travel adventure with choice-based resource management, simple yet risky barter sim system, and full motion video sequences that feature awesome special effects and Oscar-worthy method acting. The, video, the, the promo is a man wearing a clown wig just smoking an unbelievably enormous joint. We are defeated. The Amer Russian army is no more. You are the last postman. Only you can deliver the package. Wake up, shithead. We are under <laughs> Oh my god, okay, one second, one second. <laughs> One second. <laughs> oh, did he say "Wake up, shithead"? We are under attack. I believe he said "Wake up, shithead." We're under attack. Give me one second here, okay? I'm I'm making sure I got it it cut right. Wake up, shithead. We're under attack. I can't get display capture to work. Come on, man. Attack. Please. I'm begging you. The Russian army is no more. You are the last postman. Only you can deliver the package. Wake up, she said. We are under attack. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> it's a long way to your destination. The universe is full of danger. You will encounter hostile species, dangerous pirates, and even bigger idiots than you. You can try to restock at planets and space stations if you survive them. <laughs> you are low on resources. There isn't much food. 
You're almost out of fuel. <laughs> You're almost out of furl. My word. It's just <laughs> it's a Dyson vacuum, dude. I want General Horse! Dead! Dead as my dog! Uh, <laughs> that's... Isn't that the, the German church? It's Anne Orlando! <laughs> oh! Dick Hammer? Whatever happens, the package will be delivered. Or become your doom. All right. As General Horse and the Package of Doom comes out, uh, June 23rd, 2020. That one that one might make the list. Book it. <laughs> For now, um I'm going to I'm going to go see what Kate's up to. I'm going to go see what Kate's doing. Just give me a moment here. send you over to Kate she's playing House of Da Vinci 2 over at twitch.tv slash lovely momo I'll see you tomorrow for the NLS sets uh, the NLSS it's as simple as that thanks for being here for FMV Sunday I'll see you tomorrow <laughs>